We're back to the Tolja Cation Celebrity Show on the Tolja Cation Network, Tolter.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor Neil S. Haley. Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley on the Simply G Media Network. Go to simplyg.com to find out more information on G.J. Reynolds, the playful and powerful warrior. And I'm really excited, uh, always, to have Olympians. And this is a definite Olympian-themed celebrity show. Two Olympians from different years, both silver medalists, one from 2012, one from 1984. So uh, I, we're definitely not bringing back the 80s yet, so I want to Welcome to the program, Manny O. Mitchell, silver medalist from the 2012 Games. Manny O., thanks for calling, man. No problem. Thanks for having me on. Oh, I, and so I said, remember, we're not bringing back the 80s, like the Radio Shack commercial. I don't see. I don't think <laughs> you saw that. That was the funniest commercial ever. I, I love That's the only one I liked on the Super Bowl. Did you get to see that at the when you watching the Super Bowl? That commercial of Radio Shack, we want our 80s back? Yeah. That was, that, that was my favorite. What was your favorite? <laughs> Uh, I actually like the, I think, was it a Dorito commercial? I, I forget. The, so your favorite was Doritos. Okay. I think, I, I I think thought, it, yeah, I think it was a Doritos commercial for sure, yeah. I think it was the worst game ever because I'm a Broncos fan. And I think the, yeah, the, com- the, commer- the, the, com- <laughs> the commercials uh, uh, were the worst commercials ever, except that one. I, yeah. I, and I, I, <laughs> so, all right. So, Manny Oak. Tell us a little bit about your background, and then we're going to get to the story. Basically, you got a silver medal in the 2012 Games, but then the adversity came during that time. But let's first of all go to your background real quick. Well, I am from a small town of Mooresboro, North Carolina. Population 330 would be 329 because I'm not there right now. Um, so very small town. Grew up playing football. Um, started running track my senior year of high school. And kind of took took it by storm, and I started running faster each year and gained the athletic scholarship to Western Carolina University and ran there for four years. And then in 2009, started training uh, professionally with my coach, Danny Williamson, at Western Carolina University. And uh, the rest of the story is just, I guess, what they say and call it history. Um, started seeing improvements in my times and things like that. Started taking things very, very serious. Uh, apart from being a collegiate athlete and, you know, going over to the professional ranks. So, uh, so I guess the typical story for each track athlete that has made it to the pro ranks, uh, just started from a very, very small background and just trusted my training and my coach and everybody that's involved in, you know, my team. So, uh, I guess that's pretty much how I got to where I'm at right now. So, Manio, once you made the Olympics in the 2012, that must have been just the greatest honor in the world to represent the U.S. Uh, definitely. Um, it didn't really hit me until, you know, uh, after U.S. trials and we actually got through the games and the opening ceremony is where it just really hit that, you know, you made it. Uh, you stamped your, your name in the history books and you, you've done this not only for yourself, but for your team, your, your alma mater, your, your community and most importantly, your family. And, uh, you know, just to go out there and just to be there wasn't enough and just wanted to go out there with the goal to, to win. And, um, no matter how that would happen, I just, you know, I was inspired to do that and, to inspire people, you know, for a generation. So, so tell yeah. us about, about first of all the the experience of winning that silver medal. Take us through that process, and then let's go to I guess the adversity afterwards. Yeah, well, my story is a little different from most people that medal. I guess um, I was actually running the prelim. Uh, I was the first runner of the prelim of the four by four leader relay for Team USA, um, an event that we at that time, up until that time, had never. Uh, lost before we'd always gotten gold. Um, I took off and, uh, well, actually three days before the race, I tripped going up the stairs, uh, in the Olympic Village where we were staying and they seemed to think that that's what set up a, a bone bruise or a slight fracture. Uh, so three days later, of course, I get the call. I have to run the first leg. The biggest deal for me ever in my career in track and field. And, you know, I get out there, I feel good. And the gun goes off, and everything just starts going downhill. I get out, and I'm not running as fast as I usually do. And I'm like, you know, something's wrong here. So mentally, I'm like, okay, I got to keep going. So I get to the 200-meter mark, which is halfway in my event, and my leg just snaps. And, you know, I'm faced with the decision at that time to either keep running or uh, and or just to give it all up and just let all those years of hard training and, oh my. Yeah. you know, competitive spirit just go away. So I chose the first option, which was to keep running and, Probably, uh, a lot of people say I probably shouldn't have done that, and I, I probably, you know, messed up my leg even more by continuing to run. But it was more than just running to me. Uh, it's a lifestyle that I live now, and it was something that I was going to have to live with for the rest of my life, regardless of the decision that I made. So I, I chose to 
to run for those three guys that were waiting for me to come back. So, um, and not only those guys, but an entire country that was depending on me. And again, that support team that I mentioned earlier, my family, my friends, my coach, mentors, all those people. I didn't want to let those people down either. And you would think that you don't really get to think about stuff like that in the, the amount of time that we run in 44 seconds. But, you know, I, I thought about all that stuff within a split second, and I just kept running, and I made it back. So did you you, you ignored the pain through that when it happened? You just kept going? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, physically, it was very demanding to get back to the other where I started from, obviously. But mentally, you know, I, I just challenged myself, and I took myself away from the actual race and just said, you know what, as long as I get back to that finish line and just trust, you know, in my faith, that I can make it there, then no matter how fast or how slow, those guys that come after me will, will do their job, and they did just that. And I'm very I'm very fortunate that I had three guys to support me. Well, absolutely. So basically, you finished the race, and then take us through. So basically, they still qualified, and then your team ended up winning the medal, right? Is that how it happened? Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, you had to be in the top eight. Uh, there were two prelims, so you had to be in the top eight teams to make it to the final. And we ended up, even with my, my slower time, I was a second and a half off of my PR, even with a broken leg. So it's crazy to think about what we would have ran if I would have been healthy. But um, we ended up running 258.70, which is the fastest prelim time ever in Olympic history. So we made history both on the negative and positive side. We ended up tying with the Bahamas uh, in the prelim to make it onto the final. And then they brought in a reserve to take my spot and – we ended up coming just a little bit short on the anchor leg, and we got silver instead of the gold that we're used to getting, um, which, I mean, it, to most people looking on the outside in, they'll think, well, you guys should have won, blah, blah, blah. But if they really knew what we really endured that year and that season, especially with me breaking my leg and had I not even, you know, finished that lap, we would have never made it to the final anyway. So Exactly. So you, you, you would have gave up that you would never would have had a medal. So you were the exactly, one that, yeah. that that showed your perseverance and, 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 and really resolve and did it. And so that's a tremendous story. And I was, talk, I, I was talking to people that are fans of yours, and they said, my gosh, what, what an unbelievable uh, just <laughs> – comeback thing because once you break it and you keep going so basically you go and you medal and you say it was worth it because if you would have not meddled at all it, the, the whole country would have been you know saying this was a complete uh waste of time and everything went horribly but at least you meddled and now you're looking forward to rio right and that's your goal oh, training, yeah, for rio, definitely. Tra- training for rio now and uh and yeah. is, is that exciting especially a different country like that? that's a pretty interesting country to have the olympics i think it's going to be a lot of fun yeah i mean london was great um i think any city that hosts the olympics is probably going to be the top tier they want to make sure that everything is perfect for you um but, of course, I think Rio would be a blast, and uh, that's the plan is to make that team and to go back and defend, you know, a title that is rightfully ours that we're going to get back. Um, and for me personally, I like to make it individually in the 400-meter dash. And so that's my goal right now. That's what I'm working hard towards. And, of course, uh, there's going to be a lot more into it for me than most people that go back if they go back because I left a lot out there, um, and I don't want to come up short again. And I have a lot to to come back from. So a lot of people are rooting for me. Um, I have a huge fan base. Of course, people know me as the guy that broke the leg and then went to games, but now they'll know me as a champion because I'm, I'm working that hard to get back to where I was to get better. So, Well, Manny, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm rooting for you right now, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to keep tweeting you out and seeing how things are going in specific ways, and we air this on syndication, and we re- and our, our uh, syndicators re-air it, so we'll keep getting it going. But now I know you're excited about talking about something else as well, and that's Incre- oh, yeah. Incrediware. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, tell yeah, us about it. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about it. Um, basically, how I got about to uh, Incrediware was obviously the pain that I endured and stuff like that after the break in London. Uh, I struggled with, you know, coming back and recovering uh, with shin splints. And uh, I broke my fibula bone in half. So it took about 16 to 17 weeks to actually get it rehabbed fully so I could actually run again. So I didn't run for 16 weeks straight. Um, And I couldn't do any lower body lifts or anything like that. So I was looking for products that, you know, could aid with my recovery and get me back on the track so I could 
attempt to make the world championship team on last summer. Um, so I found incredible where I started wearing the, uh, it's called a tech three cast sleeve. And I noticed that, you know, I had an increase in blood flow. Um, I wasn't getting the shin splints that I was normally getting when I first started coming back into the training process of learning how to run again at top speed, elite speed. So, uh, I'm definitely grateful for, you know, that product and I still use it to this day. I actually have my sleeves on right now. Uh, just finished up a workout not too long ago. So there's definitely a plus in my training. And it can help, especially with recovering from an injury, especially because then that the pain will end up going to a spot like that. So this will yeah, help exactly. in the process because we all know as athletes, we might have something aching, something else will ache as well because of yep, that injury, because exactly. you're, you're kind of putting that pressure on that part of it so uh, excited that you're definitely uh, promoting that and all that stuff and uh, where can our mm-hmm. listeners uh, purchase this uh, Incredible tell us where they can go to their, their well Incredible they have a website Incredible.com um, and there's there's multiple items that you can get and, and try out um, I prefer of course as a runner I have the sleeves um, I also have the hip um, it's like a hip sleeve, so when I do my abdominal exercises or core exercises, I'll strap that on, and I don't feel any pain, so I can do three times the amount of sets that I would normally do with the, the sleeve on. So, But there's there's all kinds of products on there. Uh, there's products for post-surgery, pre-surgery, all, all, all sorts of things, man. So if you guys just check out Incredible.com and uh, – Maybe you'll see a picture of me on there. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely fantastic. And, and Manny, Manny uh, we're going to definitely have our listeners check out that product, make sure that link is on our syndication so that we get people definitely. to go do that. Now, I'm again, I'm a fan now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go look back. Uh, I was just looking at the story, but do you see a book in the works at one point in time, Manny? Do you see a book? Especially so I didn't the, hear that. A book. Do you see a book, writing a book about your story someday? Do you see that happening? Uh I, I definitely do. Uh, that's something that I that's something that I've actually been discussing with a few of my colleagues and a few mentors that, you know, I, I they say I inspire all these different types of people and that's great. But uh to have it in a book so people can have it with them at all times would be great. So uh but the thing is I don't I don't feel that my journey is, is over yet. Is over yet. I feel like it's just starting so Well uh I'm gonna be rooting for you if for we sure. Started yeah. Writing, we, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so I'm sure you're excited. Keep working hard, training in Rio for Rio and all the different things. But, Manny, uh, where can we find information on you as well? You have a Twitter, I'm sure, and a Facebook. Yeah, so yeah, where, can, I, where, can, where can they check those things out? Tell us about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very open on uh, the social media website. So Facebook, uh, just type in my name, Manny Mitchell, M-A-N-T-E-O. Uh, on Twitter, same thing, at symbol, Manny Mitchell, M-A-N-T-E-O again. Um, see what Instagram, same name, huh. everything's the same. So you can you can always find me. I'm out there. <laughs> it, it, it's it's very difficult, isn't it, to keep up with the social media? But you see how important it is because your fans really are for that. And I'm sure you were so excited once you came back from London. How the fan base grew from getting yeah, uh, from going from was, 15 minutes of fame to a celebrity in a matter yeah, of yeah. one event. And I, I'm so yeah, glad for you. Yeah, exactly. Crazy for sure. And I'm glad that you continue to go in the ride. And appreciate you taking the time and uh always like to have olympians on because you guys are tremendous people it's a labor of love you don't make tons of money at first but you truly have a passion about the sport and i'm glad that you're here to promote it and best of luck to you so thanks again for calling yeah yeah thank you very much thanks for having me on and we'll have you back definitely uh to update us in training and different things just reach out to me and we'll make sure we can ha- make it happen okay manio take care sounds great all right sounds take care. great all right see you later thank you all right, bye-bye you're listening to the education celebrity show on the education network and we'll be back in just a moment <laughs> 